You know what I hate? I hate how survivors just love autopiloting with brainless perks. I think the biggest one that comes to my mind here is Windows of Opportunity. It's just a loop for free simulator and prove it's just a do a gen for free simulator. It's just, oh yeah, is that how you feel? Well, killers just love autopiloting with pain res, pot, and just deleting gens after tunneling somebody. So kind of the same if you really think about it. That is like extremely survivor main coded of you to say, because I'm sure you run around in a four man on comms. You have no idea what it's like to actually struggle in the game. So you're just entitled to everything based off of that. <laughs> That's so killer main coded. You play this game like it's eSport. Like you only get fun when you ruin fun for somebody yeah, else. Yeah, well, you just remind me it's just. Who, Who are, are you? you? I'm the real side. Uh, uh. What's, What's that? that? Winning for free. Today we're going to be talking about the true side v side situation in Dead by Daylight. I'm sure you're used to the usual one, which is the killer main versus survivor main situation. That is a debate that is as, a tale as old as time, Beauty and the Beast. Are you the beast in this scenario? I guess you are. <laughs> um, killers have killers have felt like the more oppressed side for a really long time. Stuff like Swift, Swift on comms, strong perks, flashlight saves, etc. make them feel like the game is miserable for them. On the other hand, survivor mains feel like the game is miserable for them for stuff like solo queue, Camping, tunneling, etc. And both sides have been at each other's throats for a really, really long time, and I'm sure that's no surprise to anybody. It's this has been a thing essentially since the inception of the game overall. And the reason the war wages on is because A, a lot of people like to just blame the game and the other side instead of introspecting, but more so B is that, you know, both sides have kind of had a leg to stand on in this. It, one point or another. Killers at one point had to deal with old Deadheart, which had invincibility and distance, old DS that never deactivated for any reason. They had old BNPs that insta completed gens, and survivors had probably the worst example. This is the Overbrine Eruption meta where killers could literally just dry kick gens and almost win the game just based off of that alone. <laughs> Point being is that both sides of Dead by Daylight have some sort of credence to the idea that they have been the oppressed side at one point or the other. However, the true side v side of Dead by Daylight, I feel like is actually something much deeper than that. And that being the winning for free side versus the healthy long-term gameplay side. I was having a discussion with my friend and fellow streamer Revium, uh, mostly known for the Trickster gameplay, and we were talking about ways to improve the game, since that's a frequent topic for us. See, well, you know, Hence the point of this channel. Rev was talking about how he couldn't understand how people wouldn't want characters in a healthy and fair place, and they wouldn't be willing to take nerfs to receive this. And for some reason, this sparked something in me, an, an elephant in the room that I feel like is not very much addressed in the Dead by Daylight community, because to me, I didn't really recoil at this suggestion that it was confusing that people didn't want nerfs for certain things even if they were potentially unhealthy for the game overall. To me, it actually made sense. And that's because since Dead by Daylight's inception, there have been tools to absolutely decimate and bully the other side. What do I mean by that? Well, there have been tools in Dead by Daylight, whether that be busted killer, busted perk, hacks, cheats, glitches, bugs, anything that you can exploit, you name it, all throughout history, Dead by Daylight has had many tools to take advantage of an easy win. Even right now in the Halloween event, there's actually a way that you can abuse the Halloween event in order to lose scratch marks for the rest of the game, making you almost impossible to track from the killer side. And no, I will not be telling you how to do that because I don't want more of that in games. <laughs> events and PTBs in general have been playgrounds for this sort of behavior because events are there to just have fun with the unique interactions provided by the themed event. PTBs are there to try the new content to see if it should make it to live or not. But a lot of people see this as just a way to go prey on people not playing as seriously as they usually would in order to extort free wins. Also, what I like to refer as a uh, little bitch behavior Behavior. I'm sure you at home have been on the receiving end of this at one point or another. I mean, if it's not just confined to the event or the PTB, I'm sure you've been on the receiving end of a crazy meta or some sort of autopilot build at one point or another. Well, Brand, you've been rambling for a while, so what exactly is your point here? My point being is that at the core of Dead by Daylight's DNA, there is the availability to bully, take candy from the baby, path of least resistance, whatever the heck you want to call it. Dead by Daylight is fundamentally a game where winning doesn't necessarily mean that you're better. And there was a lot of conversations about that when MMR first dropped, that it literally only tracks if you escape or how many kills you get, which is not indicative of skill, but that's all the MMR tracks. And a lot of those things to get there don't actually require skill at all. 
A lot of DVD players take the unbalance of the game as a flaw, something to improve on over time, so not only can the players that are already playing have long-term replayability, but also be more friendly to new players trying to get into the game. However, there is another dark side to this, is that there are people that flock to Dead by Daylight because of this flaw. They love DVD because it is so incredibly unbalanced, and it's not just the fun over sweat people because those people do exist and they are valid, but they love that DVD exists in a way that is so easily exploitable so they can bully, so they can teabag, so they can talk their shit in the endgame chat. And it's because people enjoy gaining joy at the expense of other people. And why this is exceptionally a problem in Dead by Daylight is because there's a plethora of tools to do this with very little input on your part. And to be fair, the game is probably the furthest from this place that it has been in a very long time. And Behavior has made strides to push out a lot of the tools at which people would do this. But as you can see, this has driven a lot of people from the game as well because they were in it so they could slam other peoples with the littlest of ease. The LDR, while Dead by Daylight's divide in the community is mostly known to be between killer and survivor, there's also this whole sub fight between people who want to win for free, and then people who want long-term healthy gameplay. And why do I bring this up? I think it explains a lot when it comes to when you see these really wild and out there takes. I'm sure you guys have, if you've taken a trip to the DVD forums, you see a lot of really wild out there, just things that if they came to the game would absolutely make people quit because it would just make the game unplayable for one side or the other. And the reason for this is because they truly don't have the best interest and health of the game in mind. They truly just want to continue to live in their bully simulator. So they're going to lobby and desire things or lobby to keep things that are already like that, that allow them to bully and take the candy from the baby. I, I'm sure you've heard this plenty of times before. It's another tale as old as time when it comes to Dead by Daylight community is a lot of people like to be the power role. And that extends to both killer and survivor. A lot of people like to feel like they're in power and be the power role. And people will do anything to defend their power. It's built into DBD's DNA. And despite recent years of balancing, their persistence continues. So I would keep an eye out. When you're having DBD discussions, it's always good to look out for the bias that people are, are injecting into the conversation. And usually this comes from the killer survivor side of discussion, but there is a sub bias also possibly going on of, do I actually want the game long-term to be healthy and good? Or do I just want to bully the other side and have the tools to do that? What do y'all think? Have you guys seen this out there in the Dead by Daylight community? I'm sure you have. So let me know an example of how you've run into this out there in the community down in the comments below. I appreciate you guys so much for spending part of your day with me. If you liked this video, make sure you actually like it. And if you sub, you'll probably see more of this more often. So other than that, that's it for today's video, friends. I appreciate you all, and I'll see you in the next one. But if I do not, I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.